Welcome back to Switched to Linux. I get asked about email privacy a lot. Maybe it's because Gmail is so popular and people realize they've sold their soul to Google and are looking to take back their privacy. The good news? I have some comments on the topic. The bad news? You will probably not like everything I have to say. So let's just go ahead and get started with the philosophy of email and move on from there. We have had a shift in how we use email, which started about the time Hotmail became so popular. With that online service, which was not the first internet-based email, but was certainly the most widely used and recognized of early internet email, we changed our email protocols And in doing so, we have opened ourselves up to a challenge. Yes, I'm talking about POP3 versus IMAP. In fact, I was discussing with the project lead of the now-defunct Copperhead OS, I was telling him about a canine mail bug that was enough for me not to be interested in the OS at that time. When I explained the bug and he found out I was using POP3 on canine mail, He had a response. What is this, 1996? Well, no. It's closer to 1984, in fact. We have learned, because of Hotmail and Yahoo and Gmail, to just put our data on their servers and keep it on their servers so they can keep using it for their purposes. Did you forget that as long as these receipts stay in your Gmail account, Google keeps a record of what you buy. That is a privacy issue. But once the data goes off their server and you have erased your purchase history, now they will not have the data. (laughs) Well, according to them, but I think they're probably lying. So what does this have to do with protocol? Well, it has to do with where the emails are stored. Back in the nostalgic days of dial-up internet, computers were not always online. I know, it's hard to believe. But we may have had need to access our emails. On top of that, storage was still very costly, so we were only given a few hundred megabytes of email storage data. If that was used up, your server would reject future email. So the POP3 protocol could connect your email client, like in those days, Outlook Express, to the mail server. It downloaded a copy of the message to your computer and then deleted the email from the server. This both saved the server space and gave you access to your email offline. To contrast this, IMAP, which is the protocol generally used today, the emails are always kept on the mail server and the email client just interacts. The emails are generally not downloaded to the device, which means an internet connection is needed to read messages. What this has done is made us lazy in yet one more area of life. We rarely clean our email. Maybe that was always a problem, but in one case, the email was just cluttering up your personal computer, not the internet server. But in our data-hungry and hack-happy world, it poses a risk to keep our emails on someone else's servers. No, it's not 1996, but that is all the more reason to not keep the data of your life on Google servers. It is to protect you from the changing purpose your data has at that company, and to protect you from the hackers and rogue employees who gain access to your data. But there is a complication we need to talk about. Phones and tablets and multiple devices. Some of us have more than one place we want to use to access our messages. So how do we use POP3 for privacy with these devices? I will tell you because I've been doing this for over a decade and it has prevented my data from being in Google's hands and have kept me safer from hackers. It goes like this. You appoint one computer as your master. 
This computer is set to check email on a POP3 protocol, but is instructed to keep the messages on the server for a period of time. Once that time period passes, the computer will then trigger a message deletion from the server, but keep a copy in your mail client. I use 10 days. After an email is received by my master computer, the message will delete itself from the server 10 days after it was delivered. This makes sure that any other device that I might need to access the email, like my phone, can also download a copy. The phone being your greatest security risk, because you carry it all around, should never have email on it that are not immediately important. So merely delete your emails from that device as soon as you no longer need them. If you need a backup of all your emails, no matter the clutter, set up one email client on some computer or device or even a primary computer, just a different client, that grabs those emails and keeps an ongoing list of them. The rest of the devices, make sure to delete them once the email has been dealt with. Do not leave them around forever. Also, make sure you have a backup. Your email client is storing those emails in a file. Make sure you know where that file is located and include it in your regular backups. This is in case you have a data loss, you will still be able to access your emails. So, no, it is not 1996, but that is all the more reason to never keep your emails on a mail server any longer than you have to. Now that we have that out of the way, let's discuss how you can get an email address. First, it is my number one recommendation that you buy a domain name for about $10 a year and get a cPanel hosting account. These have the most user-friendly email systems and you can get them from a number of companies. I have affiliate links for SiteGround, A2 Hosting, and InMotion Hosting, which you can find here. There are dozens of other companies, and the power of cPanel is the ability to make a backup of your server and take it to a different company if you need to. With this method, you can generally create as many addresses as you want, so you can make addresses that are just for banks, others that are just for stores. But really, don't give a store an email address unless you have a very compelling reason to do so. You can create email addresses for each family member, and of course the all-encompassing junk address from when you do not want to share a real address with somebody that desperately needs, needs, needs an email. As for other email providers, I know that ProtonMail is not bad as a webmail, but at this time, they do not support POP3. You can still use the ProtonMail Bridge, which is a paid add-on that will allow you to connect to a mail client and export your emails. That approach is better than nothing, and at least ProtonMail is encrypted, so even outside the reach of that company, your emails are safe. Now, Zoho and Tutanoto, my apologies if I said that wrong, they seem okay on the surface, but I cannot vouch for them as I've not had a need to use a hosted email service in a long time. The worst are Yahoo, Outlook, and Gmail. If you must use one of those worst companies, always set up your account to use POP3 instead of IMAP. This way, you keep the server clean and clear, and you have an offline record of your emails instead, and they do not have access to your data. In short, email is one area we all need a little help in. The best thing is to buy your domain and a cPanel web host, which seems problematic in our modern world of free emails. But remember, we said these privacy steps are intentional, and sadly, privacy is becoming a luxury item. If you must use one of the popular email providers at least convert to POP3 as it is better for your privacy than IMAP. I will link some videos in the description about using cPanel and some of the email clients, and I will do some more detailed tutorials in the coming weeks. 
So thanks for coming along on this privacy series. Don't forget to have a look at the rest of the videos in this particular playlist. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.